You know guys, I can remember a time when I'd actually look forward to trying something new for a video, where I'd get to show off or even flex my knowledge of various video games, whether I've played them as a kid or even newly experiencing it. Where I'd get to look into a bit of the video game's background of certain ones and learn new things about them, whether I've played them before or not. Those were some good times. And then I decided to review nearly all Hanna-Barbera related video games based off their creations. This was a fucking trip. Before we begin and talk about the games themselves, I wanted to take you guys with me on how this video got made. As when I was re-watching one of my favourite Yogi Bear movies, I suddenly had a massive idea for a video. Hanna-Barbera related video games. As I remember playing quite a few of them when I was younger. So when I got everything ready, I did my normal research into the games that I originally wanted to talk about, only I suddenly found myself feeling, well, intimidated. You see, when I began my research, I decided to take a look at the Wikipedia page on how many shows Hanna-Barbera made, only to be reminded of how many they made. Good God. You truly forget how many TV shows, cartoons and movies they've produced over the years. Feeling slightly overwhelmed, I decided to instead focus on the games that hardly ever get mentioned and are widely regarded as Hanna-Barbera properties. So that means games that involve the Powerpuff Girls and Dexter's Laboratory won't be in this video, as I kinda class those as Cartoon Network video games. And who knows, I might do a whole video on those games one day. But back to this one. As I was picking out the games that I wanted to talk about, I noticed a weird thing about their video game Wikipedia page. There are many listings on certain games, but they don't appear to have dedicated pages for them. I mean, look at this. Look at this list of games right here. There's links to all of them, right? Well, if you click on one random one, you get sent to another list of these same games with some of them with no links. So I guess they can't find or don't exist? I'm so confused by this. So in the end, I had to make a little spreadsheet on how many with a link and which games I could talk about, which also led me to discover something else. Answer me this, who do you think has the most video games to its name? Because like a good number of you, I always thought it was Scooby-Doo. But as it turns out, it isn't. That record belongs to Tom and Jerry. <laughs> yeah, Scooby only has 13 video games to his name, while Tom and Jerry has 23. Seriously think about that. More people remember the Scooby games, while I can safely say that I've only heard people mention or talk about one Tom and Jerry game. Two if I'm being generous. Kona also shows the sustaining power this Great Dane has compared to the Lauren Hardy of cartoons. Did I just compare Lauren Hardy to Tom and Jerry? Which would mean Scooby-Doo is Charlie Chaplin. But if anything, I'd say Tom and Jerry is more like Bottom than anything with how violent they can be towards each other. Jesus Christ, my mind is a mess! What was I talking about again? Oh yeah! Hanna-Barbera games! Now once more, this isn't going to be a video on every game related to a Hanna-Barbera property, as some of them I wasn't too big of a fan of or really cared about. Also, some of the games are, unsurprisingly, as we found out, are a little hard to find for some reason. Still no clue there. I'd also like to quickly point out that I don't own every game that I'll be discussing about, so I'll be emulating some of them. And also, I'm not Cadicarous. I ain't making an hour long video. Right, time to get into the meat of things, and I've decided to go by console releases for each show that the game is based around. One category I ain't touching is the Scooby-Doo games. Primarily because a certain big-titted vampire lady will be very cross if I tried to steal her thunder. Not that one. Not that one either. Okay, we've just shown all three hex girls at this point. Future me, can you at least get the right lady? Wait. Wait a second, is she a vampire? Or... I... Or are we just clutching at straws now? God damn it, Wally! First up is the titles released on the classic NES, and oh... Boy! There is quite a few to get through. I think I'll start off with the Wacky Races game, and truth to be told... I'm really surprised that this game was never released in the United Kingdom. Seriously, this game was never released outside of the United States, or Japan for that matter, and it just baffles me as to why. As there's nothing in this game itself that would upset a British audience. 
But now that I think about it, Dick's costume is fully red instead of his more recognisable purple colour and I could see people being upset about it and let's face it, us Brits like to complain. The game itself wasn't what I was expecting it to be. As with a title with the name Wacky Races, I was going into it ready to play a racing game. But instead, it's a side-scrolling platformer. Quite an enjoyable one too. You can only play as Muttley in this game, which is sad as I wanted to play some dick. Wait. Wait, did I actually say that? You have three main hub levels to choose from, and these levels are called Hip Hop, Splash Splash, and Go Go America. I must admit that these names are very randomly chosen. As Hip Hop has nothing to do with the genre, Splash Splash is the only level that lives up to its name as there are quite a few swimming levels, while Go Go America kind of feels like the most obscure reference to Power Rangers. However, this game came out in 1991 and Mighty Morphin wasn't released until 1993. So I have no idea at this point. The levels you explore are pretty straightforward and you travel to some very interesting locations like the desert, the woodlands, the river slash ocean, the North Pole, a very trippy Mario inspired level and the town of Moria. Muttley has some cool abilities too, as he has two jump options, a small or higher jump depending on the platform. His attacks include a bite which is kind of amusing to pull off, a projectile bark and throwing bombs. You can guess which one was the best one to use. Muttley also has this ability to float across levels with his tail. While not something he'd use in wacky races, he does use it in the short-lived Dick Dastardly and Muttley in the Flying Machine series. Man, I, I'm surprised I remembered that show. <laughs> Look at him float like that. Just like... Just like... Oh, uh, just like Mario. In fact, some of the level designs, enemies, and even the beginning hub level kind of reminds me of Mario. They more or less just copied and paste certain bits from the free NES titles and used them in their game. Huh. I hope this isn't a continuing trend. The bosses for each level are characters from the show, and once you get their patterns down, you can beat them easily. Especially with the bombs. The only boss I had a little trouble with was the Army Surplus Special, as you have to also deal with quicksand while fighting a tank. In order not to sink, you have to keep constantly pressing the jump button over and over, while also trying to deal damage to the boss. This was the only annoying boss to beat, but it did offer a little challenge. However, my thumb disagrees. The story goes that every level, Dastardly is in some sort of trouble and it's up to Muttley to save the day. However, when you beat the game, Muttley ends up with him and you more or less lose by beating the game. I get why they did this, as in the show, they never won at all. But come on! After all that effort? Such a waste. Not much else to say about this game, apart from it looking okay for an NES title, and the sprites have this real charm to them. With that, let's move on. Next up is the Jetsons video game, and this time, this game was released outside of the United States and also Japan. I'm not Saudi at all. The story goes that our main character George has to stop his boss, Mr. Cogswell's profit-making scheme to mine a dangerous planet out of its minerals. Huh, so it's just like real life, but in space. Let's see how this game goes. Okay, we're starting things off like that, are we? So yeah, like a lot of more famous NES titles, this game is quite a challenge, but all for the wrong reasons. This game is- Right, back on track. This game- uh, Moving on, as it- Is this going to be a continuing- Okay, look. I don't mind moments like this in games, old or new, but I won't lie, they did get annoying at some points, and that's all I'll say on that matter. The gameplay is a pretty simple side-scrolling action game where you can walk, crouch and jump with a little jetpack. You can also use the switches to spice the gameplay up a bit, and some allow you to change the gravity and ascend to a higher level. There are little pickup items that you can collect and that uh, they, um, um, you know, I actually don't know what they do. So I'll just say that they're collectibles and move on. Oh, you can also pick up crates and more or less throw them at your enemies and it kind of remi- yeah. Actually, scratch that last sentence. It completely reminds me of the Chip and Dale games for the NES. Pretty much an almost copy and paste in the same way. Apart from the jetpack, of course. Okay, you know what? I think I'm done with this game, as I honestly couldn't get too far into the level, and I won't lie, I got bored playing it. So, let's move on. Up next, we got the Tom and Jerry game for the NES, and let's hope that this one will be at least a little bit more interesting. 
Right off the bat, I've got to give this game props for how well the music is at the beginning. I always enjoy 8-bit versions of famous songs and this is no different. And I also love how it pretty much tries to replicate the titles of Tom and Jerry and, uh, t uh Tuffy? You mean the dog chewing toy brand? Nah, they're of course talking about this little guy, Jerry's little brother. Or nephew. Or cousin? I guess they couldn't decide. But what I find funny is that this little guy's name gets changed later on down the line to Nibbles. Never explained why, and if you still aren't sure of who this little guy is, then this clip will probably remind you. You know, I'm surprised at how much I remember these shows. Getting back to the game, you play primarily as Jer- I was gonna say Jeremy! What? Jerry's name is Jeremy! <laughs> What kind of idiot? Oh, good God. Getting back to the game, you play primarily as Jerry, and your mission is to save Tuffy from Tom, who's locked the little guy in a trunk in the attic. And let's be honest here, if this was set in real life, that mouse would be dead. And if I'm being really honest here, this game is surprisingly rubbish. While the graphics are very well detailed to some extent, and Jerry's sprite animation is also... almost godly, the rest of it could be kind of forgettable. I mean, your main weapon is a marble, and while you can pick up other weapons, such as a hammer, bubblegum, a cleaver, and a motherfucking drill, baby! Yeah! They really don't add much more to the gameplay, to be honest. I think this might be the first time I felt bored using a drill. God, that shouldn't be taken out of context. The levels you go through aren't all that interesting, but I will say that I see what they were trying to go for with the spider webs as when you walk past them, you begin to slow down a little and leaves you a little vulnerable to attacks. However, I never really found myself in a predicament like that and found them to just be annoying. Tom is of course the final boss of the game, but he's also the only boss in the game. And you fight him no less than five times, which makes me question as to why it's just Tom. As you can get Butch, Lightning, Meathead, or even Dr. Applecheck. Actually, no, scratch that last one. Jesus Christ, no. Money. Oh dear god, no! So overall, Tom and Jerry for the NES isn't bad, nor is it great. It can be fun in a few cases, but honestly, it loses its charm halfway through. Especially after a few attempts. But now, time to go back. Back to prehistoric times, where the concept of money, cars, politics, even cigarettes, are unknown to man. That's still weird to see! Even now! God damn! Unlike the other NES titles, the Flintstones got two games released onto the console, and they're more or less exactly the same game. The only difference is that you get to play as Barney in one of them, which could be considered an improvement. Maybe? I'm not sure anymore. So in order to save time for those watching as we still got more games to cover, I'm just gonna simplify the story for both games. The story follows our rock buddies trying to save their pets Dino and Hoppy from the evil Dr. Butler, who <laughs> looks like he really doesn't belong in this game. And the gameplay is pretty simple with a few enemies to fight and I can safely say that this game is just okay. Now onto the real gem of the Flintstones games, and I can safely say with 100% certainty, it's just okay. Look, these games are pretty much identical in terms of gameplay, and while one of them did keep my attention longer due to the added addition of Barney, but I can honestly say that none of them can be considered enjoyable. Also, as mentioned, one game has an interesting story with dull gameplay, while the other has an okay story with semi-dull gameplay. Plus, this happened to me nearly every single time I tried to climb. To be fair, I don't remember a lot of NES titles using this mechanic, so props to the developers for trying. But yeah, I'm done with these games. And let's move on to the NES successor, the Super NES, and uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh no. Yep, more Flintstone games. So let's just get this one out of the way first. The first Flintstones game is based around the live action movie released in 1994. And I'm going to be honest, I never understood the hate this movie got and rather enjoyed it as a kid and still enjoy it today. And not just because Halle Berry is in it, but <laughs> that uh, might have helped things a little. Am I interrupting? <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, hello. <laughs>
Presentation wise, the game looks really good. I'm a little iffy on how Fred and everyone else looks, but I can see why they want to capitalise on the film by making the characters look exactly like the actors from the film. Gameplay is... it... it... it's the same. It plays almost exactly the same as the NES titles! Why? Why is this? Why is this gameplay so important to the Flintstones? And nearly every movement, action and attacks are the same! Hell, you even climb on edges the same way! However, I've got to admit, despite it being pretty much an upscaled version of the NES titles, I found myself enjoying this version more. And the more I thought about why, I slowly realised that it's because it has more charm compared to its NES counterparts. But I won't lie, I honestly couldn't play it for more than a few hours. So I'll just move along to the next Flintstones game. I just hope that this one's a little different compared to the others. The story for this game follows that while at their Buffalo Club, Fred and Barney are told that their leader is retiring, and in order for one of them to become the successor, they must try and locate the legendary treasure of Sierra Bedrock. So with that, every member rushes off along with Fred and Barney to find it. Gameplay was... a complete surprise! While the main bulk of it is exactly the same as the other titles while playing in the levels and Barney now playing exactly like Fred, the rest is a little different. It more or less becomes a Mario Party game with two players. <laughs> yeah, you are more or less using a rock... dice. Huh. And move both Fred and Barney to certain places to get through the levels to progress, while also avoiding many obstacles and their wives to pull through. I've got to say that out of all the Flintstones games I've played, this one held my attention the longest. I even say that I enjoyed this more more than the movie game. And I never play party games. Seriously, I've never been a big fan of them and probably never will. But this game more or less almost got me to give the game genre another try. But... This was a terrible idea. Yep. And whose fault do you think that is, Wally? If I had movable arms that could do anything else than play a game, I'd be pointing at you. <coughs> Next up is the Jetsons game for the Super NES. And surprisingly enough, the last Jetsons game. The story for this game is George is approached by a superhero named Captain Zoom. And I think he only appeared in... In the... Huh. What? Was he in an episode? I, I honestly can't remember. Anyway, he asks for George's help in fighting Zora and her band of space pirates from looting the solar system. So it's up to George to save the day and by god this opening cutscene goes on for so long. And why only George? Well, Captain Zoom is very tired. What? Gameplay wise, it's a normal platformer with similarities to the NES version, but... Unlike that one, in this game you can suck. <sighs> I better change that. And also use your P.O.P. vacuum to beat enemies and also use it to get around. To be honest, I was really surprised at how fun this game is. Sure, it's a little annoying to get the jumps right while holding onto the ceiling, but once you get it right, I won't lie, I felt quite accomplished. But like any other game during this time, once you get to certain levels, the difficulty spikes hit you hard. However, I think if you have the right amount of patience, you'll be able to complete this game in no time. The bosses are... kind of a joke. Some do provide a little challenge, but I'd say you'll have no real problem with them. At least I didn't anyway. By the way, fun fact about this game. A Japanese game company, Karakawa Shoten, created a mascot named Yokai Buster Riku and requested the game's developer Sting to more or less remake the Jetson game and turn it into Ruka's first ever game. And it was called Yokai Buster Ruka no Daiboken, which translates to Phantom Buster, Ruka's Big Adventure. And while the story, themes, character slash enemy models, backgrounds and music are completely different, the gameplay is exactly the same. I... <laughs> I honestly don't know how to feel about this. Is this a form of pirating? I mean, they did completely change the game in some ways, but they didn't change the gameplay. So before I get lost into another rabbit hole, I'm just going to slide along to the next title. Now on to the Tom and Jerry game for the Super NES. <laughs> Let's see how this one goes. Oh. <laughs> yep, 
It's more or less the same as the NES title, but of course the key difference is that the graphics look nicer and sharper with more fun gameplay. The platforming can be a little tricky for no reason, and also Tuffy is now playable for a second player. And that's it! I'm not doing this again. Let's move on. And finally, I get to talk about the true Mickey Mouse of the Hanna-Barbera cartoons. Yogi Bear. And it's no surprise to see that I'm not the only one who thought this way about Yogi. Thanks, B-Mask. And it was also clear that Hanna-Barbera thought the same way with his shows that featured him as the main man... Bear? <laughs> Gar. As there were quite a few shows that had massive crossovers featuring some famous HB characters and leading them was this lovable idiot. Which makes Laugh Olympics a very odd show. I mean... Uh, oh. Getting sidetracked again, aren't I? <laughs> <clears throat> But Yogi has always been one of my favourites, as I cannot love this dumb idiot bear. Ticket? I don't need no ticket. I'm a bear! And with that, we come to the very last Super NES game to talk about. Um, technically. It's technically the last. Adventures of Yogi Bear. Or, as I like to call it, Yogi Bear's Classic Capers. This game is quite possibly the most simplest platformer of them all. I mean it, there isn't even a story in this one. Well, there is, but it's not really shown or explained in the game itself. Unless you have the original manual or just look it up on Wikipedia, you'll find that Yogi's home is being turned into a chemical dumping zone and you have to stop it. That's it. Each level is pretty much the same as you go around collecting clocks, opening up flowers, and also jumping on those picnic baskets, which also gives you points, and in order to defeat enemies, you simply have to jump on them. Once more, that's it. Now, one thing I'll quickly point out is that a friend of mine once called this a Donkey Kong Country ripoff. However, when researching both games, I found that technically Yogi Bear came out first before Donkey Kong. So, I guess that makes Donkey Kong a Yogi Bear ripoff? <laughs> just with better polish. As while I do stand by this being a very simple platformer, I mean that. And while that's good in some ways, meaning anyone could pick this game up and just play it without much thought, it does also come with its fair share of problems. As Yogi can only jump and that's it. There are no pickups to throw or items to use in any levels or any basic attacks. You just jump. Jump on rabbits, birds and um, uh, Snowmen? What? Also, I will say to be careful when running around, as Yogi gets a bit carried away and more or less speeds up, leading to accidentally bumping into enemies and losing health. Another thing I need to mention is, there are no bosses in this game. At all. Which really surprised me, as I'm fully expected Ranger Smith to show up battling Yogi with a giant machine, but as it turns out, it isn't Ranger Smith at all, but it was a clone, as the real one was kidnapped by these aliens who simply want revenge due to the events of this movie. That was the most obscure reference I've ever made in a video, and I bet you only 1% of you got that reference. But yeah, that's Yogi Bear on the Super NES. And with that, I would say that is the last gaming title for that console. But you'd be wrong. For you see, there is another video game on the Super NES, and it's called Hanna-Barbera's Turbo Toons. A game which features many classic HB characters racing each other around many areas, and it was only released in Europe. Now, I would go on about this game and how I truly feel about it, only I can't. As the footage you are watching isn't mine, and finding this game to buy online is OH MY GOD! And I also went looking for it to emulate, but it doesn't appear to exist. So I guess we'll just have to skip over this one, which is a shame, as the game looks really fun to play. And it's also the first time I've ever seen Hong Kong Fui make a game appearance. Oh, I'm nearly there now. Come on, Wally. Come on. Come on. Let's get this over with. Right. Next up is the only N64 title that features Hanna-Barbera characters. Tom and Jerry, Fist of Fat... <laughs> what the fuck was... Oh! A beat-em-up game. Nice. Since the release of Smash Brothers on the N64, other game companies have wanted to try their hand at making the next one. While sadly that never happened, I think this game does come close at being an accurate take on the genre. Since, you know, it's Tom and Jerry and they do love violence. Which I can safely say is just as over the top as the show. 
Thank goodness. Also, to maybe one-up on Smash, instead of it being stuck to a 2D camera, you are free to roam around the area in 3D. So you are more or less looking around for weapons, grabbing power-ups, and beating the crap out of each other. There are a total of eight characters you can play, and all appear to be in the show, like Butch, Spike, Tyke, Tough, and even Duckling. This was honestly quite a nice surprise to play, and I'd happily say that I'd be playing this game with friends for a laugh. Sadly, this game does have its fair share of issues, like its character design and graphics not staying to the test of time. And unless you have friends, it gets a little repetitive after a while. Speaking of which, this game only allows two players, which was a huge mistake! Also, the background music is, well, passable, but it does get annoying after some time. But it is still a fun little fighting game, and I'd recommend you guys to give it a shot. Uh, uh, hi guys, Wally here. I just want- oh fuck, I forgot about the microphone. Um, <clears throat> did, <laughs> did you know- um, did you know- oh Jesus, this chair. So funny story, uh, I completely forgot about a Tom and Jerry game. Uh, this one is called Tom and Jerry War of the Whiskers. It's a PS2 game and uh, the reason why I'm kind of slipping it into here because originally uh, as you probably guessed from the scripts layout and how the uh, the stories laid out well the video layout um, I'm kind of going into console order uh, But there is a reason for me to kind of jump shift into this one at the moment. You see um the game is actually essentially a remaster slash remake of the N64 title. So that's why I'm kind of slipping it into here rather than later on with no explanation. So yeah, apologies for the uh, for the um, the interruption. And now we'll get right back into the video where you can hear my thoughts and opinions of War of the Wh Whiskers. So yeah, apologies again, guys. Uh, 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 enjoy the video. So yeah, Tom and Jerry War of the Whiskers is essentially a remaster slash remake of the N64 title. And if it isn't evident as of right now that the gameplay mechanics as well as the graphics are the hugest improvement. I will be honest, this isn't because I actually improv this entire bit, but I have not really a lot to say about this game. Mainly because it's exactly the same except just more brighter and colourful. But I will say that out of the two, that this game is probably the better one. All the characters from the previous game make their appearance here, but also new additions too. So yeah, I'd really highly recommend this game, as well as the fact that you can play up to four players now! So essentially this game is godly! God damn it, this is why I need a script for most of this. So yeah, if you want to actually pick up a really good PS2 game, I highly recommend this game. It's time we move swiftly on to the PS1 games, and thankfully there's only three of them. Thank God. First up is another Tom and Jerry game, and I think this one gets slept on and hardly anybody remembers it. Called Tom and Jerry and House Trap. And the game is a split screen trap em up? That's a genre? Never heard of that sort of gameplay genre. Anyway, your goal is as Jerry is to set traps around the house and beat the living crap out of Tom. So just them doing their normal routine. Nice. You can more or less grab weapons to beat Tom or Jerry yourself, but I'd say your best choice is just to leave traps around for the other to fall into, hit them, then run away while doing it all over again. As the melee combat is kind of hit or miss. No, wait, come back. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That joke just wrote itself. As more times than not, the AI just locks onto you and hits you with no problem, while you just hit thin air. As you progress, the level opens up a lot more and you have more areas around the house to set traps and fight. You also fight off one boss in this game and that boss is Mechano. Credit as Mechani Cat in game. And this boss can just sod off. This guy is just relentless and the only way you could beat the bugger was quickly grabbing a mouse toy and while the robot cat is distracted by it, hit him with the fires of God. I, uh... I think I'm slowly regaining my sanity. <laughs> there are other missions you can do, like save the duck from being eaten by Tom, stop Jerry from distracting Spike, and Jerry trying to ruin Tom's love life. But that's about it for this game. While it is still enjoyable to play, I can't say I'd play it for more than... an hour at most? But please do feel free to find it and play it out yourself. Our next one on the list is Flintstones Bedrock Bowling, and I'll be real with you right here and now. I'm not looking forward to this one. Well, to my surprise, this game actually has a story. 
with full voice acting too. So the story is that Fred is being forced to stay at work to complete his job or else he will be fired. But Fred already promised Barney that they'll be going bowling. So Kazoo decides to give them a hand by turning Fred's workplace into a giant bowling track. What? So your goal is to knock over all the bowling pins as well as collect as many gems for more points while also avoiding a few obstacles. I asked for this? Who asked for this? I sure as hell didn't. Who asked for this? And I could go on to discuss more about this game, but that's it. That's the whole game. And it's, it's not great. Let's move on. I, I'm just so tired of this. The final PS1 game to mention is Wacky Races, making a comeback after nearly a decade. But while I am going to be talking about that game, I also would like to mention that it has an enhanced version on the PS2 called Wacky Races starring Dick Dastardly and Muttley. Now I'm going to be talking about both of these games since they're the same game technically, but it's also a nice, if lazy, transition into the PS2 genre. Another thing I'll mention is that while I'll be showing the gameplay of the PS1 version, I will be primarily using the PS2 version since, as I mentioned, the enhanced version just has more going on for it, and they're pretty much the same game. And to my absolute surprise, both versions are amazing. There's so much going on here, literally living up to its name and showing us just how insane these races can get. So many abilities, tracks, and a whole bunch of races to choose from. God Damn, and to tell the truth, I remember playing this game as a kid, and I'm so glad it holds up so well. There are two game modes to choose from, arcade mode and adventure mode. Since this video is long enough, I'll only go over adventure mode, as that's where the main game is. And after picking the character, you are dropped right into the hub world, and this game is giving me so much Crash Team Racing vibes, and I'm all for it! The controls are really responsive and the power-ups are just brilliant with many options you can pick from. There are many different missions for you to complete which are the normal races, collecting Muttley trophies and collecting points. While I admit that I do largely prefer the PS2 version, the PS1 version isn't without its own charm. As it still plays the same and while it isn't as chaotic as its PS2 counterpart, I still thoroughly enjoyed myself. I highly recommend you try and find either one of these games, but if you want my personal choice, Get the PS2 version, as there is a lot more races, more challenges, and just, just feels so much better to play. I would talk about this game more, but I think it's best if I move on, as there is another game to mention. Now, to my surprise, there is another Wacky Races game on the PlayStation 2. Wacky Races Mad Motors. <laughs> Let's see how this one goes. Oh wow, it's fucking awful! I, 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 oh my god, I, I'm honestly shocked at how boring and bad this game is! So you need to win 12 races while also collecting these coins in order to progress and also unlock the other races. As when you don't collect everything and win, you don't progress. While if you collect everything and don't win, you still don't progress. So, <laughs> this sucks. There's just no life in the game at all. No one is animated while driving and stiff as a board. Also, every character looks... Ah, oh, terrible. By the way, in order to get faster, you need to collect these fire extinguishers, which kind of reminds me of Sly 1's racing minigame for some reason. But unlike that minigame, these things are a piece of turd. No matter how far slash fast you are, for some reason the other guy more or less isn't too far behind. Seriously, every time you accelerate, whoever is in second place more or less sticks to you like glue. Get off me arse! Oh god, n nothing about this game is fun. I'm so I, I, I just need to move on. Wow, that was terrible. Ah, oh, hopefully the next one will be somewhat decent. Oh, thank god! Yep! This game was made by the same development team who made Mad Motors, so it's just as terrible. Race 12 times, character designs are a joke, boring and stiff controls, and... Uh, just a terrible game. Surely that's it. That's it, isn't it? <laughs> but it isn't, isn't it? Yogi Bear for the Nintendo Wii.
This game was based around the live action Yogi Bear movie that was released in 2010, and while the movie wasn't very successful, I won't lie, I kind of enjoyed it. I went in expecting nothing big from it and enjoyed it for what it was. Plus it was nice to see Yogi getting some love back then, and it had some pretty strong cast playing the characters too. Like Dan Aykroyd as Yogi, Tom Caver- Tom Caver- uh, the guy from the Flash series, as Ranger Smith, and Justin Timber fucking Lake as Boo Boo! How does that work? Seriously though, it's pretty impressive. Now as for the game, it isn't that bad. The story is more or less different. Okay, well, Ranger Smith has photos someone took of the wildlife and he needs to send them to the... <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> okay, okay. Oh god, I, I honestly didn't expect to see these character models. <laughs> Yogi and Boo Boo ain't looking too bad. The ranger, however, <laughs> he looks like he should be an extra in another video game. This is great. Once word gets out about all the endangered animals that people can see in this park, the crowds for the 100th anniversary celebration will be huge. Oh, I have to go tell Ranger Jones the good news. If he's not uttering merit badges again, that is. That man can't get enough merit badges. What the fuck? What have you done to me? Please, please, let me explain. You've got about two seconds before I rip off your head and make us identical twins. Now where is my friggin' head? Am I wrong? The character model and the animation reminds me of Deadhead Fred. I could be wrong, but that was legitimately the first thing I thought of when playing this game. <clears throat> anyway, after some wind blows the pictures away, it's up to Yogi and Boo Boo to find them and save Jellystone Park. The gameplay, to my surprise, is actually alright. It ain't nothing new, but it's a simple little platformer where you go around collecting pies, baskets and other items while also avoiding wildlife too. Honestly, I'm surprised at how fun this game actually is. Yes, it's nothing groundbreaking, but it certainly is enjoyable compared to some of the other games I've played for this video. And it also could be the fact that I am... <sighs> I'm just so very tired. That nearly anything could be considered good in my eyes. Let me rephrase that. Almost anything could be considered good in my eyes. Eh, that will do. For now. While I'm not the biggest fan of the Wii, with some of the games not being very well implemented with the controls provided, but this game does them pretty well. To be fair, there isn't much use for the motion controls in it, but when you have to search for items in the bushes and need to do this... Then you're probably doing it right. As for the rest of this game, it stays pretty consistent throughout its run, and to be honest... I think I'm done. Yeah, I'm done. 17 games. 17 bloody video games I talked about today. <sighs> Jesus Christ. All this started with a Yogi Bear movie. And it ends on a Yogi Bear video game. This just proves that curiosity is my worst enemy. That's it. That's all the Hanna-Barbera related video games I wish to talk about. And while it was exhausting to say the least... You know, it was pretty fun to discover some hidden gems too. Now I know there were a few other games I could have mentioned like Huckleberry Hound in Hollywood Capers, Yogi's Great Escape, that Johnny Quest video game, Yogi Bear's Gold Rush and the Flintstones King Rock Treasure Island. Just to name a few, but as I mentioned at the very beginning of this video, this isn't a video about every Hanna-Barbera game ever made. Despite the fact that it certainly felt like it. I just couldn't bring myself to go on for far too long and those games just weren't that interesting in my eyes. Also, some of them may or may not exist. Ah, oh, you know what? I don't know anymore. But who cares? Who cares? I'm done! <laughs> I'm done, thank God. Thank God this video is finally over. I can fight! Ah. <sighs> uh. Well, that was different. And how the- Oh.
Oh, son of a b I think, I think I'm stuck here. I don't know how to get out. How do I leave now? Help! 